Well, hi everyone. This is our worship service for December 19th. Uh, today we're going to be looking at our gospel text from Luke chapter 1, uh, Mary's song. Uh, she sings, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. So we'll look at that in our uh, sermon for today and talk about the, the music of Scripture. So with that, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson for today is from Micah chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from old of, uh, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. The rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. He shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure. From now on, he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And he shall be their peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our epistle lesson for today is from Hebrews chapter 10. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he had said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. He abolished the first in order to establish the second. And by that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel text for today comes from Luke chapter 1. In those days Mary arose and went with haste to the country, uh, to the hill country, to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is it, why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what the Lord had spoken to her. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mightier uh, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength in his arm. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in his remembrance of his mercy, 
as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And the focus of today's sermon text is the lesson from Luke 1. We bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord God, of all the women in creation, you appointed your, your humble servant, Mary, to bring Christ into the world. Today, as we look at her song, we pray that you would make us like her, that you would make us humble servants of you. And we pray that we could, along with Mary, sing, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Amen. Well, uh, I got a bit of a secret to confess here. I like watching musicals. There, I said it. It's out in the open now. Everything from Moulin Rouge to Hamilton. I, I listen to soundtracks for just hours on end. Uh, recently, my son introduced our family to the musical The Greatest Showman. Uh, it has Hugh Jackman in it. Uh, who's portraying P.T. Barnum uh, of Barnum and Bailey's Circus. It's a fun movie. It's got a lot of really great songs in it. And almost really every scene seems to have a musical number in it of some sort. And so I wanted to share some of that music with you today because it's interesting how these things could tie into Advent and in our text for today as well. So the opening verse of one of the, uh, the first song. Hugh, Jackman, Hugh Jackman's character sings, Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. Then searching in the dark, your sweat soaking through the floor. And buried in your bones, there's an ache that you can't ignore. Taking your breath, stealing your mind, and all that was real is left behind. And then later in the chorus, he sings, Oh, this is the greatest show. It's everything you ever want. It's everything you ever need. It's right here in front of you. This is where you want to be. And uh, as I was working on my the, the sermon for today, I, I was listening to this soundtrack and it struck me how some of the lines in that we can kind of take out of the context of the movie, but see how these things really apply to our text from Luke chapter 1. Uh, we're getting so close to the Christmas season. Christmas is literally next week. And so that first line, ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. We've waited all year so that we could once again come to this celebration of Christ's birth, of his coming into the world. And the reason he came into the world is because for so long we lived in the darkness of our sins. We've been searching in the dark, as the song says. And really, you and I were looking for the light, the light of Christmas, the light of God's grace and his mercy coming to us in Christ. Because, like the song says, buried in our bones, we have an ache we can't ignore. The ache of our sins, the ache of our sadness and suffering and, and pain and loss. All these things that so punctuate our daily lives. They leave us with a sore spot right here, right? There's this aching in our chest, a longing for something better. Knowing that our sins consume us. They're taking our breath. They're stealing our mind away from God. But now as we get to the chorus of the song, with all due respect to Hugh Jackman, who's a wonderful singer, he doesn't have the greatest show on earth. He doesn't have everything we ever want and everything we ever need. Because what we want and what we need is salvation from our sins. That we want to... Be freed from this darkness that we've been living in. And thankfully, that salvation is right here in front of us 
in today's text from Luke chapter 1. So in Luke chapter 1, I mean, actually Luke chapters 1 and 2 look a lot like a musical. There are four songs that are sung by God's people in those first two chapters. The first song we see is uh, near the end of chapter 1. Zechariah burst into song at the birth of his son, John the Baptist. If you remember Zechariah before that was mute because he didn't believe what the angel Gabriel said about John's birth. Then you have today's text from a little bit actually before Zechariah's song. And so in this song, Mary's song, this is a song that the church still sings 2,000 years later. Actually, Zechariah's song is one we sing as well. But in chapter 2, the angels sing their announcement of Christ's birth to the shepherds. And after that, Solomon sings a song, another one we sing in worship. He sings a song of blessing when he holds the eight-day-old baby Jesus in the temple. God's people throughout the centuries have sung God's praises and marveled at the wonder of God's love for them. Now Mary's song here, she draws inspiration from the Old Testament. Her song is similar to one that's sung by Hannah, who is the prophet Samuel's mother. Uh, so you can see that in, in 1 Samuel. She also draws inspiration from the Psalms from the Old Testament songbook of God's people. And so as she begins to sing here, she says, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Mary praises God with her very heart and soul. Her heart and soul magnify the Lord, the very Lord that is in her womb right then. Mary rejoices in God, her Savior, and she's rejoicing in the God who is taking on flesh within her. Like to me, this is just like a mind-blowing moment. That she's praising God, and yet this God is in the flesh, being knitted together in her womb as the Savior grows to when he is going to be born. And so as Mary continues her song, she sings, For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant, for behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. From now on is another one of the songs from uh, Greatest Showman. We'll get there in a minute, but I just thought it was interesting that those same words were used here. So Mary acknowledges that she is, the, she is God's servant. She thanks him for choosing her to bear the Savior. Mary's been chosen by God. From all of the women who would ever live in all of human history, God chose her to be the mother of Jesus, to be the mother of God in the flesh. What a humbling experience that must have been for young Mary. And she continues singing, For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God does mighty works of salvation for his people throughout all generations. And his name is holy. In fact, one of the commandments, the second commandment, deals with the holiness and honoring God's name and, and keeping it holy among us, keeping that name holy among us. In the next verse, she sings, And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. God's mercy is his undeserved, unearned favor upon us poor sinners. God's mercy includes the forgiveness of our sins, eternal life, and salvation, all of which Christ came to bring us in his death and in his resurrection. Mary continues singing, He has shown strength in his arms. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. Mary uses a lot of Old Testament imagery. In the Old Testament, to, to describe God's strength, it said that God had a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. And so she uses that, that image of the strength 
of God's arm. And we see how God is a God of reversals. He takes the low and he raises them up. He takes the humble and raises them up. But the proud and lofty, he humbles and brings down. Mary says here that the thrones of kings are nothing compared to the king of kings and his heavenly throne. That he has brought down the mighty from their thrones. He's thrown down kings. And yet he takes the lowly and he treats us like royalty. Because God delights in exalting, in lifting up those who are humble. He did this for Mary, and he does it for you and me as well. Mary continues singing, He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. He spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. Abraham was the, the founder, really, of the, the nation of Israel after a while. It is from Abraham's family. That it's promised all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed and through his offspring. That eventual offspring comes down throughout the generations and ends up being Jesus. And so in Abraham and in his offspring, all of the nations of the earth are blessed. Now as we look at Mary's song today, she gives us a wonderful example of service before God. Upon hearing the news that she would be the servant of God, that as the angel Gabriel told her what would happen in her giving birth to the Savior, she says this, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. What a great act of, of humble service and what a wonderful example for us to follow as well. When we come before God and say, God, I am your servant. Let it be done to me according to your word. Because as you and I, we journey through this life, we're called to humble ourselves before God, to be his servants, to do his will. Now remember, God offers wonderful mercy to his servants, not because of our service to God, but because of what Christ has done for us in his death, and in his resurrection. So if you find yourself prideful, if you feel like you don't need God or you don't need other people, then it's time to repent. It's time to repent and receive the wonderful news of forgiveness that Christ has for you in his death and in his resurrection. Because God absolutely loves it when his people humble themselves before him. I mentioned the song from now on a little while ago. It's, it's really one of the last songs of the movie. P.T. Barnum throughout the movie has been chasing after the adoration of fans and seeking after wealth and money and glory for himself. But he realizes near the end of the movie that his pursuit of wealth has damaged his relationship with his family. And so at one of the lowest points in the movie when he's basically lost everything... Hugh Jackman's character, P.T. Barnum, sings this song from now on, promising that his life will be different. The song says, uh, I'm actually kind of jumping into the middle of the song here. It says, For years and years I chased their cheers, the crazy speed of always wanting more. But when I stop and see you here, I remember who all this was for. And from now on, these eyes will not be blinded by the light. From now on, what's waited till tomorrow starts tonight. It starts tonight. And let this promise in me start like an anthem in my heart. From now on, from now on, from now on. And now the rest of the cast starts to sing as well. And we will come back home. And we will come back home, home again. And so if you feel like you're far from God, if you feel like you've just spent way too much of your time chasing after other people's praise, 
If you feel like you've lived life at such a crazy speed and you've always wanted more and just never seemed to get enough, stop and realize whose you are. You belong to Christ and he has mercy and grace and forgiveness for you. And from now on, let the promises of God's grace and his mercy start in you, in your spirit. Let those promises be like an anthem in your heart from now on. An anthem that keeps you going through all the difficulties of life. An anthem that makes you stop chasing after other people's praise. An anthem that makes you stop trying to live a crazy life of always wanting more. And if you feel like you're far from God, come home. Hear his word proclaimed to you. Come to his house. He wants you here. He wants you to hear his wonderful grace and love for you. Come home. Come home to be with us. To be with him. Let your soul Magnify the Lord and let your spirit rejoice in God, your Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds pure in the faith until life everlasting. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray together the prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We pray the prayer used during an epidemic. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the epidemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort all who mourn. Sustain all medical personnel in their labors and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, who created and completed all things. On this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.